Welcome back Death Toll Racing. Today we're going to build an engine run stand. So let me show you what I got going on so far and we'll go from there. All right, so here are my plans. As you can see here, I don't have any. So let's get designing something and then we'll start cutting some metal. Okay, pick a victim. Let's choose this one. Um, okay, so width. These are just sitting on there. Those are actually just remo removable top valve covers. They're kind of clever. Um, I've never run them. They're terribly ugly. But, okay, so two feet is as wide as the engine, which I, I already knew that small block Chevys were less than two feet wide. So our mounts are right in there. So they're way in. So mounts center to center are going to be roughly, what, 15 inches? Somewhere in there. So anyway, so that should be good for a small block Chevy. Uh, let's see that small block this big block Ford big block Ford I think is actually quite similar to small block Chevy as far as width so let's take a look at this oh, I got this one in plastic so let's see so metal up there yeah it's going to be it's almost exactly the same it's around 15 inches um, up so let's see overall width we don't want to build it so narrow that it'll fall over no two feet this thing's about exactly two feet with no valve covers on it uh, so the majority of the weight is within two feet width so that should work that should work out okay all right there it is let's get to work so essentially all we're building is a two by three rectangle with another two by three rectangle standing upright that will house the control panel and the gauges all right guys i already made a mistake uh, i cut four of these at three feet to the long side and three of them two feet to the long side um, two and two is going to make our rectangle and then the, the two and one is gonna make our control panel slash handle for rolling it around. Um, I screwed up though. The three feet ones actually need to be squared off at 34, not cut down because they're going off of a flat surface, not off of a miter. So I screwed that up uh, while I was at the saw. So that's what I get for not paying attention. Now I'm just gonna prep all the parts uh, and put a weld prep in since we are basically butt joining everything when you're doing a miter like that. Um, and then we will square everything up, tack it up, and then we will weld it. And we're just going to build us, design and build on the fly for the rest of the way out. I kind of want to bolt them down, but at the same time, I kind of just want to be lazy and weld the things on there. So now I'm just laying out for the throttle and the throttle is just going to be that shift lever that uh, I'm repurposing. Um, it's some no name brand 
shift lever. It's like a knockoff of like an Indy, I think. Um, but back in the day when you used to be able to buy those things. Um, and here I'm making my first set of engine brackets um, and I'm rivet nutting them in. And if you noticed at the very beginning of that, I put a washer in there and that's so that it accounts for the thickness of the rivet nut. If, if I were just to uh, match up the holes and drill them, uh, by the time the rivet nuts are in there, two of the holes wouldn't line up. So um, that's why I did that. So now I'm just dropping in the motor on top of it um, and centering it up. And then I, my uh, jack failed on my, <laughs> on my engine lift, so I had to um, put the old one back on. I, I got an air over hydraulic one for it, and it worked one time. Um, so, uh, you know, high dollar, high dollar item there. Um, and now I just used a transmission mount for the back. Um, and that way I can make different brackets like this for all the different engines. And then here I'm making the, we're going to be fresh water supply on this. We're not going to run a water pump. So I'm making a little adapter so that I can hook our fresh water to the engine where the water pump would bolt on. And then we will have a pressure regulator and all that stuff that's coming up later, um, to regulate the water pressure going into the engine. And I'm going to get a little bit more into that a little later, because there's a couple things you need to watch for on that if you're going to do it that way.
Okay, we're getting real close now. Fourteen degrees or so, and our oil pressure is still going down. So we had good oil pressure, so that's good. Everything seems to be functioning. The fuel pump turns on, and I'll fuel in it, so I don't want to try it um, again because it'll be running dry. Um, it's gravity fed. That thing will pull uphill, but it's not going to have to because it actually will be gravity fed, which is nice. Then I want to point out my water pressure regulator. So if you're not going to put a thermostat in, you don't need a water pressure regulator. So if you have no thermostat, you don't need this. Um, you can just run it straight um, and, and it'll run. The problem is the engine will never warm up. Um, it's it's going to be very, very cold the whole time you're running it, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you're just breaking in your cam, that's all you're using this thing for, um, then, you know, so be it. Uh, it. It's probably good enough um, just, to, just to stay cold. Um, but if, if you do actually want to warm it up and make sure everything's sealed up real good and do all that stuff, uh, you'll want a thermostat and then you're going to want a water pressure regulator. Otherwise, um, your thermostat, the water will be deadheading in your thermostat and you'll be running whatever your water pressure is. Um, and on city water in Spokane, it's about 100, 100 pounds. So I'm on a well um, and I'm only like 65, but that's still way too much pressure. Um, and then you're deadheading into that thermostat. So um, we're, I'm going to run mine at like 10. So now... I'm going to turn this down and hopefully it will actually go down and I don't have to bleed it off. Uh, I'm going to have to bleed it off. Okay. Now it's going to have zero pressure until it deadheads on that thermostat and it should actually leak out a little bit through the bypass I'm watching for leaks now okay. there it goes and now we got a leak out of a freeze plug so out of two freeze plugs huh that's interesting so those freeze plugs didn't make it through the fire. So that'll be uh, problem number one that we have to fix. Kind of nice to discover stuff like this before it's an issue. Looks like we got another leak coming out the back. Yep, out of the freeze plugs back there. Should have changed those plugs. I didn't really even think about it on it. Um, I'm gonna try to jimmy rig them and see. I'm just gonna try to rock it a little bit sideways. This is the worst one. Ooh, man, that is loose in there. I think I made it worse. Let's see. Yeah, I definitely made that worse. You got a rubber EDM washer. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, hey, that's not so bad. Okay, here goes nothing. I got the battery on it. We got water is on. We got a little bit of leaks, but it's nothing too terrible. All those freeze plugs we're going to change um, afterwards. It's I should have done that beforehand, but we didn't. Um, so here I'm going to turn on the fuel pump. We're going to look for fuel leaks before we do anything else. That looks pretty good.
so that this actually worked out really good. I'm, I'm actually quite excited about it. Um, but there is something I don't like about this thing um, right now. So far, everything worked great. Cooling system worked good. The fuel system worked good. Uh, all that stuff, everything worked great, except for I don't like this. So that's those C-clamps um, that we used for the leveling feet. Um, so I would recommend if you're gonna build something like this, do it different. So other than that, that that's really my only complaint. So it worked out really good and I'm, I'm super excited that this short, the short block survived that fire, um, other than the freeze plugs.